Hello friends, welcome to Mastering VMware. My name is Mayur Parmar and in this video I will show you how you can easily install the vCenter Server Appliance. vCenter Server Appliance is an alternate solution to your Windows based vCenter Server. So let's begin with installation. So before begin with installation, you have to download the vCenter Server Appliance ISO from VMware website. And I have already downloaded the ISO. So we will begin with the installation directly. Now ISO size is around 3 GB. So after downloading the ISO, mount the ISO to a CD DVD drive. And before begin with installation, you need to install the VMware client integration plugin, which you can find in the folder named VCSA. So just open the VCSA folder from CD and just install the VMware client integration plugin. It is the Windows installer. So you can just install by clicking next, next and finish. So after installing plugin, run the file vcsa setup.html. So just open it the file and it will open the browser for you. So just wait for detecting the client integration plugin, which we have installed. And now as you can see that the vcenter server appliance 6.0 installation has started. So here we have two options. Either we can install the vCenter Server Appliance or you can or we can upgrade the existing one. But we are installing for the first time, so we will just click on install button. And here we have the license agreement and user license agreement. So just choose I accept license agreement, click next. And here we have to provide the ESXi host details. vCenter Server Appliance is deployed on any of the ESXi host, which required a minimum 8 GB of memory. So just provide the IP address of your host or host name you can also provide. Provide the username which is root user and put the password and click next. And here you might get the certificate warning. So click yes to continue. And it will validate all the settings you have provided with the ESXi. So it will take, it can take few minutes. And now here we have to provide the appliance name, which can be set any we required. So my, I am just entering my VCSA and pro and here the username for the vCenter appliance is the root by default. So we just need to provide the password here. So we are providing the password. and click next to proceed further and here we have to provide the deployment type and here we have two types of deployments available same as windows based vcenter server you can either go for embedded deployment or you can go for external deployment in embedded deployment vcenter server and platform service controller are installed on the same server and on external deployment you can either install the platform service controller or you can sim or you can install the vcenter server but if you are going for only installation of vCenter server, previously installed platform service controller is required. But in our scenario, we are installing the fresh. So we will going with the embedded platform service controller. So just choose the install vCenter server with embedded platform service controller and click next. And here we have to configure the single sign on. And here you can create new single sign on domain or you can join the existing single sign on domain. So if you are, if you already have the single sign on domain, so you can directly join to a existing single sign on domain by providing the platform service controller IP address, password and the port number. But in our scenario, we don't have an existing single sign on domain. So we will create new single sign on domain and single sign on username is by default, which is administrator. So we have to provide the password. And we have to provide the single sign on domain name. So we are going with the default, which is vSphere.local. And we have to also provide this SSO site name. You can also provide any site name. And we are going with default, default first site. You cannot use the space with it. 
so after providing details click next and here we have to specify the appliance size here you have four types of different sizes available first is the tiny small medium and large so choose according to your requirement and according to your environment so we are going with the tiny click next and here we have to choose the data store where you want to store the vCenters or appliance data if you have any remote data store you can also choose it here but we don't have any remote so we are going with the local data store and enable the thin disk mode to preserve the disk space more click next and here we have to provide the database in database you, you can either use the embedded database which is PostgreSQL or you can use the Oracle database but if you are going with the Oracle database you have to provide the Oracle database server port number service name username for authentication and password but we don't have any ex external Oracle database so we are going with the default one which is embedded database so just choose embedded database click next and here we have to configure the network setting for our vCenter server appliance so just choose the network it is a VM network by default and provide choose the IP address type which you want to use for example IPv4 IPv6 we are going with the IPv4 you can also specify the network type which is static or DHCP but for vCenter server appliance the best practice is to go with static only do not use DHCP and provide the network address 1. you can also use the host name if you have the DNS server set up in your environment provide the subnet mask provide the gateway and you can also specify the DNS servers and you can also configure the time synchronization and you can synchronize time by two options you can synchronize appliance time with the ESXi host or you can specify the different network time protocol servers NTP servers to synchronize the time but, but we are going with the default to synchronize the time with the ESXi host so just choose the ESXi host and you can also enable the SSH by choosing this box and click next and we are getting warning regarding the host name because we have provided the IP address so just click OK and ignore and now we are ready to install the vCenter server appliance so just review all the configurations you have done and click finish to start the installation process and now you can see that installation is started and installation can take around 15 to 20 minutes depending on your configuration so till that time I am pausing the video and and I will continue when the installation gets completed so now as we can see that the we are at the final step it is completing the installation and my installation took around 15 minutes now installation is all completed already so now as installer vCenter server is successfully installed you can either open the vSphere web client using the below URL provided and login using administrator at that vSphere.local and you can close the installer so just click on the link to open the web client and you will get the certificate warning click advanced proceed to the IP address and close the installer so now as you can see that we have successfully installed the vCenter server appliance and now you can try to login using the details you have provided administrator at the rate vSphere.local and password 
as it will take some time before time to log in because it is first time logged in vCenter server appliance is based on the linux so it is more robust and more scalable and now you can see that we have successfully logged into vSphere web client so guys thank you for watching the video you can check out more step by step articles on our website which is masteringvmware.com link is available below in the description if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe for more videos please like and share the video thank you guys